Alright guys, so before the video starts, I'm just going to put a little clip in here of me explaining. I've sort of been gone, I know, for a couple of weeks, but it's the Christmas period. I think that's understandable. I got a little busy. Uh, Happy New Year's as well to everyone. I know it's about 10, 10 days too late. I was going to say years for a second. 10 days too late, but um, yeah, I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and I um, hope 2020 is a good one. But yeah, I'm going to upload a bit more frequently now. Uh, things seem to be calming down at work and obviously, like I said, I've got a lot of free time. Now the festive period sort of out of the way, so... Let's get this series rolling on and I hope you enjoy the video. What's up YouTube? I'm just another guy and welcome back to my story. So, first game of the season is today for Geylang International. I've got quite a few things to go through, transfers and other such things. So, first big bit of news is on this screen. It, um, is it visible on this screen? It is visible on this screen. We have a National C license. We are now a qualified coach we're not just some random punter off the street from england managing in singapore we actually have a coaching badge now i actually did this i think i finished it january or december which meant i started doing it four months before that so i've had it for a, i've been working for it for a while and it just straight up slipped my mind to mention it in previous videos so well, it doesn't make a difference now. I've got the badge, so we've got the first coaching badge. Did ask for the second one. They said they couldn't allow me to do it because, like I said, I think it was January-ish time. I think we we were in the middle of pre-season, if I remember correctly. Probably don't. But yeah, we do have officially our first coaching badge. It's fantastic news. Obviously, it's a part of progressing in our in this save will involve us getting all of them. So it's good to it's good to like I say get on that ladder now and officially be on our way. Before I talk about Gay Lang International as well, I want to talk about Fiji very quickly, or very briefly. Uh, we did play two games after the... Well, we played four games, sorry, after the um, the final. We had two friendlies. We played Samoa's under 23s, where we lost 2-1. We had a man sent off, uh, which as a result, we capitulated. We did have a 1-0 lead. The same man who scored. Bale ended up getting sent off four minutes later. Like, from hero to zero in the space of a few minutes. And we just couldn't really compete with Samoa. We allowed them to dominate the game from that point on we had a chance i think or two if i remember correctly it's been a while now but yeah we lost the samoas on the 23s but since then we've been on a good streak we've beat new caledonia's on the 23s 4-3 we beat cook island 3-2 they had two men sent off in that game credit to them they really did put up a fight because i forgot they had a man sent off for the last five for the last uh sorry 20 or so minutes because they were just that good they really did go for it uh, so then another man sent off so a few feisty tackles here and there from their team but eventual winners that was a nice game for us and then we've mo our most recent game in november we won 2-0 we've got a friendly against tonga coming up in march so that's not too far away now the squads will probably be announced for that in a couple weeks time but yeah tonga's not going to be a sorry tonga fiji's not going to be really mentioned too much just be a, an every now and again update you probably won't see a match for a long time for this team until we actually have some sort of international tournament. And I'm not too sure what tournaments we actually compete in. That would be a nice feature to have. Sort of say when upcoming tournaments or draws for the team that you are managing on the international aspect is coming up. But that's something they've decided not to add in this game. So apart from the Olympic qualifiers, I'm not too sure what else we really have coming up. I'm not sure if the uh, Pacific Games is an under-23 thing or if it's a national team thing or what. If I th if from my memory, from my knowledge, it's a senior team thing. So... I don't know if we are going to get an opportunity to manage in that. But we'll just stay with the under-23s either way. It doesn't hurt playing these games. We are one of the stronger teams in the Oceana Divisions too, or the Oceana Nations. So it should be a good little boost to our reputation. And we will continue, obviously, to win some games. which We sort of need to improve that win percentage of ours, which is still at 38%. I'd like to get that a little bit higher. Anyway, on to Geylang International. So, yes, we've had an off-season and a fairly busy one as well. Uh, there were a few changes uh, to staff. Which I haven't really spoke about too. Where am I going? Too often in this transfer history. Let me go to the staff. Didn't really, haven't really spoken too much about the staff ins and outs. But yes, I changed up my assistant manager. I got rid of Asman and I brought in Jessup Chan. We also brought in some under 19 staff as well. I let my chairman do it anyway. But yeah, nothing too major there. I'm sure it doesn't really make too much of an impact. I won't at this stage. I, do I doubt he'll follow me anywhere apart from uh, if I were to stay in Singapore for future. But yeah, two outs for the team. I do want more, but I'm struggling to sell players. 
is um, Safdari, who we already knew about. He went to um, India finally. We sold him originally in the first transfer market when we joined the club, but he wasn't able to leave until their transfer market opened. So that happened in December, so he left. And Matthew Palmer, we've loaned him out to Southern in the New Zealand Premier Division, which is their top tier. He's played seven games, yet to score, continuing up. So he's really bad run of form. He's gone back to his home country too. I do like Palmer. I think he's a fantastic player, but I don't have a space for him in the team right now. We're only going to go with one up top this year. And he has, he is probably the best striker by a little bit. But because he's foreign, it means I have to put more weight into his position. And I decided that I don't think he's good enough to deserve his spot. Now, when you see one of the foreign players I brought in, you probably think, why have I picked him over Palmer? But it's just about the position. We've got an abundance of good strikers at this team. And I don't think Palmer is visibly that much better than them. And also with his goal record as well. I know there's seven substitute appearances for Southern, but his goal record isn't really helping him either. So... These two guys will leave. Palmer's only on a loan, by the way, as well. So he, we, he will come back, and I probably will offer him a new deal as well at the end of the season if I can find terms that are agreeable. So it, it, it's not like his career here is done, but yeah, he's he's on his, he's out on loan, and we'll obviously reevaluate at the end of the season. But to the end, we spent £27,000 on a combination of four players. I actually need to talk about before, before the season ticks over because we actually signed one guy, Gonzalo Maldonado. We signed a defensive mid Argent defensive midfielding uh, def- midfielder, Argentinian. He played for what, All Boys and Tigre, I think it's pronounced in Argentina. And this guy is a fantastic player. He's sort of coming in as the replacement to Maguire, who of course left us at the end of the season, refusing to renew his contract. And this guy is a brilliant player maker. He's a sweet, that's the role he's going to be playing for us as well. He's got some great passing, good tackling techniques, first touch decision making as well. I really do have high hopes for this guy. His composure lets him down, but at this level of football, he is an absolute worldie. So Maldonado is an exciting player to see. And elsewhere, these are all you know, the first. These guys we spent money on are all from Singapore themselves. As you can see, two from Home United as um, as well. There were a few more that I wanted, but in the end, I decided against it. I didn't really th- see the worth in spending as much money. Now, the problem with the foreigner rules is it means it overvalues a lot of players from Singapore. So, 8K and 11.75K on these types of players from Home United, probably overspending in my book. I don't think they're worth it. But then the alternative is to go out there and sign a 20-year-old or something who is probably going to be worth, uh, they'll ask for double, even triple the amount that I paid for these guys in the hopes that he can be, be better players. I want instant impacts. I want people that can come in and improve the squad straight away. And that's what these three lads are. So, the first guy is Nagra, Negra, Negara, sorry. God, I had that planned out in my head anyway. Nagara. We signed him from Home United, like I said. He looked like a decent goalkeeper last year for them. Put in some good performances. And I'm hoping he can come in and really do the job we need. £750 a week makes him one of the most highest paid players in our team. So I really do need him to step up and have some good performances. Because we didn't have a good keeper last year. And it did. Um, I think it cost us a few points here and there. The next guy is Abdil. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his surname. Let's give it a go. Kayim? Kayim, maybe? 30 year old centre-back. Ichikawa obviously left last year due to picking up an injury for 12 months and deciding to call it a day in his professional career. So we needed a replacement in a way. I was tossing and turning, do I want to allow a foreigner spot? Because obviously I had one left with the Argentine signing. I have one more spot available. And I was like, do I bring in this fantastic foreign centre-back who's actually from Fiji, would have been a five-star player. I decided against it. I don't think it's worth allowing a foreigner spot to go to a centre-back. I know they can make a difference, but... Obviously, a good defender can have a great impact on your team. can help you save points, but I felt it was better to use him in other positions. And I'll explain my reasoning for the player we have, because I feel like I need to explain it. But um, the foreign player we brought in. But anyway, KM looks decent. Shame he's going to be out for two to three months. He literally picked up this injury two or three days before our first game of the season. Massive blow. He made it all the way through preseason. And what was it? Something in training, I think. Uh, yeah, suffered in training. Absolutely. Actually, it was yesterday. Just uh, really is annoying. So he'll be missing... For a huge chunk of this season for us. Camis is next, our left back. I mentioned our full back problems last year. Uh, we've not gonna we've not signed a right back this year, but we have signed a left back. Three caps for the national team too, so he must be decent for this country. Signed from he's actually playing against his ex team here today, against Ballester. Sorry about the cut there, but yes, we will be playing against them today, Ballester. So he'll be playing against them first game back. He didn't have a fantastic year last year for in all fairness. Oh, and also, he's the next player. There's probably something to mention as well. So, 
let's see how he goes. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little on the fence with the fullbacks in this team, in this league, because there's some good attacking quality compared to the defense. Like they kind of outweighed each other. Like your attack's fantastic, the defense is trash. As a result, defenders have a tough time. Attackers normally have a good time. We we'll see how it goes, but I, uh, he's an improvement to what we had anyway. So that's always a good thing to have. Oh, good thing, obviously. You want to improve your side. And the last guy we signed, and the guy I think I need to reason, or at least try and justify my reasoning most with, is Jordan Clark, English left attacking midfielder. So the formation we're playing this season is a 4-2-3-1, and I was looking all off-season, the entire winter, I was looking for a left attacking midfielder. And I'll be honest with you, I found absolutely no one above a two-star, according to our current ability. So, it's just it's just... I don't know what it is. I think it's probably my lack of player knowledge and my scouts not particularly having great knowledge outside of the country itself. So we just we just couldn't find anyone, at least of of a fantastic quality. So in the end, I was like, okay, I am going to sign a a young player in this position, someone under the age of twenty three, so he can he's eligible for that rule, and I want to make sure that he has potential to grow. And I want to try and get the best I can at that age. So there were three players to choose from. There was one from Singapore that I would have had to spend about 40k on to buy. So he instantly ruled himself out of the equation there because of his club. And there was two others. So there was Jordan Clark and there was one guy from Fiji. Um, the two players, Jordan Clark and, Fiji, and the guy from Fiji, I can't remember his name now. Uh, they were very similar. So Clark was better, a little bit better physically, way better technically, but mentally wasn't able to compete with the guy from Fiji. So... Again, I, I weighed it up. I had them both in on trial for about a month each. Or actually, no. So, sorry. Jordan Clark was in tri on trial for a month. And I re-signed him for another trial. So, the other guy was in for a month as well. I played them both in a few friendlies. And I just decided I'd go with Jordan Clark in the end. So, he'll probably be making his debut today. I've got hopes that he can play well. I'm not expecting in incredible things. But I hope that he can put in some good performances. We have another player as well who I'll be rotating the I'll be, I'll be rotating each other in and out on that left hand side of the pitch. In fact it's probably best to go to the tactic screen now and talk about how I'll be rotating and what sort of formation I'll be playing. So away from home and our first game of the season. We've a little bit against us, but this is the formation we're gonna go with at least to start. Things could change, things can obviously develop throughout the season. But this is it for now. So in goal, we've got a sweeper, keeper, defend, just to just to lean towards what the player's best at. We can go goalkeeper, defend, obviously, but we'll keep a sweeper, keeper. I'm going to go with two wing back support. They were originally full backs. I've changed to wing backs just to try and utilize what Ifran's good at. And Camis Kas isn't too great at it, but he'll he will we hope he does the job. Plus, with the two defense midfielders, I think we can allow the wing backs to push forward. The centre backs are. Uh, see a centre-back defence, they're nothing too special, nothing too complicated there. The defensive midfield was where I kind of had my problem. Now, Maldonado, I think, actually, I'm going to make a change here. Maldonado's best position is deep line play, make a defend. Wahid shouldn't be playing normally. In fact, oh, sorry, I'm going to get rid of this. Wahid isn't my first choice centre-mid. It is actually uh, Asaraf, who scored, obviously, in our semi-final against Home United last season. It was his first ever goal for the club. He would normally be playing, but he's suspended. So, Wahid is come in. Normally, Asaraf likes to play ball winning midfielder defend, which is why Maldonado was in support. But for today, we're going to put Wahid in support and Pete Maldonado on defend. The attacking midfield is going to be all attack. So, it's going to be Van Huzen, Fernandez, who is playing for the suspended Applin, and Clark on that left-hand side. And up top, we've got Saberin. So, a very attacking half of the, the final third. Very defensive or somewhat supportive side in the defensive um, half of the pitch. Just basically, uh, it's a clear divide between attack and defend. I want these guys to create the chances, these guys to defend it. Maldonado and Fernandez to create the passes, link the transitional phase of play. Maybe with the wing backs help. And hopefully, just some, I don't know, it's, I've just got to try something out. I, it's the 4 2 3 one was what I was leaning towards. Maldonado's sort of inability to play centre midfield means I've got to play defence midfielder. I can obviously put Wahid or some other centre midfielder in this position, kind of fill the gap between the two. But for now, we're going to go with two defence midfielders. Like I say, this this will develop a formation will always evolve. In possession, I've only got one shout on, or one instruction on, and it is to play shorter. Otherwise, it's pretty open, pretty free. Uh, again, I don't really see myself changing this too much. I mean, maybe how I want the cross is done. But apart from that, I, I'm happy to keep things all as they are. I don't want to restrict the play anymore. Positive mentality as well should be noted. In transition, I want to counter-press, counter-attack, and distribute quickly. Uh, the... So the thing that I might change is when the possession is won, I might take off counter-attack. 
Just, uh, but for now, we'll keep it on counter when it is one. And distribution type, I want to keep it pretty open. I was considering maybe short kicks or rolling it out or something. But again, I'll see how it goes for now. See what, see how we play with this tactic to start off with in a competitive environment. And also, we've got a slightly lower line of engagement. We're going to get stuck in more urgently. I mean, press more urgently, sorry. Get stuck in and then keep everything else the same. So that's the tactic. This is the team. I think I've ran through it anyway. So we're going to jump into the game against Bal Leicester. Sorry, I, I keep... <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce this. I literally have it on my phone here because it's not pronounced how I've been pronouncing it. I've got a list up of locations in Singapore. Bear Lester. Bear Lester, sorry. There you go. <laughs> I want to make sure I get it right. So how, how many debutons was that? I think I can't go back to that. But I've, we have, let me have a look here. So we've got Keeper 1, Left Back 2, Maldonado 3, Fernandez 4, Clark 5. Five debutons in the starting 11. That is quite a few. But let's go. Belastir versus Geylang International. First game of the season for us. I don't think anyone else has kicked off. I think this is the first day of the season in general. Let's hope it's uh, let's hope it's a good one. We've not started off dominating possession, which is obviously something this this formation somewhat requires. I I kind of want us to kind of check the game out, get a lot of the ball, and build up our play. I was going to go with a slightly slower tempo, but I decided against it, and we're going to fall. Oh no, we're not. It's offside, but it looked like we fell one nil behind there. I don't know if that was offside from the original shot. Yes, it is. We kept the line very well there. Number 14 nearly ran back on and played him onside. I don't know who number 14 is. I wish that... I don't know. Maybe they, sh maybe they should have the numbers there just so I can <laughs> remember who I'm blicking. Why is Maldonado so tired? Oh, I maybe I missed something there. Maldonado looks fucking shattered. Uh. That's the last thing you want to see. One of your best players looking like he's not going to make a full 90. Let me go to opposition instructions and put a few shouts on. We are not playing well. At all. Ha. Huh. We are not playing well. Um. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Don't go very defensive. Um, Something's got to change. Lower the tempo down. Had a few more shots saying that before the end of the half. We're still not dominating possession. We've not really done anything. Neither have we given away opportunities though. So one positive at least in the formation. This has not been an exciting game. I was going into this season so excited. Should have spoke about our start of season expectations. Sorry. I've told the board we're going to finish mid-table while nothing is going on. We've got a highlight here. But the media prediction is we will finish second last. So no one expects anything from us. And I've gone out there to play positive. And look to choke the game out of possession. <laughs> so, uh, something's not lining up in expectations to reality. Maybe with this tactic. And we gave away a half chance. Not seeing a fantastic performance from someone. Fernandez, Fucking hell. Clark's had a shocking debut. We're going to bring Abbas on. Who is the other left attacking midfielder. He came through our... Uh, fucking 20 aggression. He came through our youth system last year. And he will bring him on. We'll also bring Kasman on in a second as well. We'll make this substitution. We'll go into the tactics and we'll actually put Kasman in centre midfield and allow for a little change in shape and see how we go there. Salah running through on goal to the keeper and he slots it home. Yeah, we're going to have to make an actual tactical change because this is not been a good start to the season for us. We have not created any opportunity yet to have a shot on goal and we're nearly at the hour mark. So let's let this highlight go through actually. Maldonado with a good ball over to Abbas. Just come on, gets his first few touches of the game. He's, he looks a little bit open there, but we decide to maintain possession. Maldonado again, plays it to Abbas. There's a lot of space down this left-hand side. Camis, oh my God, Saberin missing a sitter. Anyway, into the tactics. It's not working right now. We're going to take Wahid off. We're going to bring Kazman on. I'm going to put Kazman in the centre midfield. We're going to have him playing centre midfield support. We are going to change you guys to more supportive roles. Just so you drop a little deeper. Saberin not playing well. We'll we'll keep it for now. We've made two, we'd have made two changes by the hour mark. The shout to so some passion. Not really doing too much. Seventy minutes nearly gone in the game. Sixty eight to be precise. Got a oh, they've given the ball away. We're going to do something with this, surely. Van Hoosen beats his man. Why 
is he not? Why is he just not crossing it? Why is he? <sighs> so bearing off, we're going to bring Tet on. Tet shouldn't. Tet is actually our third choice striker, but because uh, our other striker is currently out with a illness or something, I think he's, he shouldn't. He should be out for long. I don't think it was a major um, inconvenience. We're still not really doing anything. I want us to work the ball into the box a bit more. Play it a little bit wider. And we'll see how that goes. I also want to tell the teams to get creative. We have not created a single shot on target in this game. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is going to... Fucking dreadful start to the season. Not a shot on target for the entire game. And we've got Home United coming up. That... And normally a game we win if Fran is out for three to five days, three to six days. Great. Maldonado makes his professional debut. Uh, I'm going to send the assistant to that because fuck that. What a dreadful start to the season. Maldonado played very well. Shame no one else in the team wanted to turn up. Maybe something like that needs to be done. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so unsure with this formation, guys. But until, uh, next time I'll meet you back, let's talk about that because this has been a dreadful start and I just want to move on from this. We will meet you back for the um, Nagata Unicorn, brackets Singapore. Uh, I don't know where else there is a Nagata Unicorn. Fuck me, what a unique name. But apparently not enough. Uh, yeah, so we're currently eighth in the table. The media prediction, I talked about it very briefly in the game, but the media prediction is that we will finish eighth with 400 to 1 to win the titles. Apparently we do not have a strong team, but uh, fuck me. I, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I'm, a, I'm. I'll be honest with you. I felt quite confident going into this season, but after that first game, uh, the confidence is kind of sapped from me. This is a fairly short season. It only goes to September. So, like I said, we'll do ballot. We'll do Nagata Unicorns, and then um, I think there should be a cup coming in at some point as well. The Singaporean FA Cup or something like that. Uh, let me flick through here. The Singapore Cup. We'll see how we can do in that as well. I think our best opportunity to win anything here is with the League Cup or with the Singaporean Cup. So, yeah, Premier League might be a bit of a, a bit of a washout. What's the dynamic saying? Because I know team cohesion wasn't too great, but it's on the up. Uh, they were a lot, uh, they were a lot worse before. But yeah, I will meet you guys back for the Nagata Unicorn game. Hopefully, by then we'd have picked up a little bit of form, got the formation working a little bit better, and actually have actually have the fucking ability to get a shot on target this season. So until next time, guys, peace out.